Ready? We're going to do seven speakers, two minutes each. Yes. Yeah. So far, we're up to 43. So if we did that way, we can go straight to uh, seven minutes. All right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being here. Apparently, we have a full house. Um, here, here's the only bad part about that. I've been notified by the uh, fire marshal that we need to make sure that all these aisleways are clear so that in case of an emergency, so if, you know, that means you have to, you know, kind of double up in a spot or whatever or, and some people might even, uh, you, you'll be able to hear us if you go out into the hallway or even uh, outside, I believe, you can hear uh, the meeting. And as people leave, then if you want to come in, uh, we just need to follow the rules on the fire uh, uh, marshal uh, stuff. Uh, anyways, so thank you for being here. It's uh, February 8th, City Council meeting with Santee. Let the record reflect that all council members are present. And uh, tonight, uh, I will be leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. The invocation will be led by Pastor Gary Lawton. And let me tell you a little bit about Pastor Gary. Uh, Gary Lawton is the Calvary Chapel Senior Pastor for the past 11 years. Or is it 12 now? Where's Gary? Oh, I <laughs> couldn't see you back there. Is it 11 or 12 now? 12 years now. And uh, Calvary Chapel continues to serve the needs of the Santee as they have for the past 30 years. Calvary offers worship services on Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday. The facility is new, so you might want to check it out. The church is thriving at 10920 Summit Avenue right here in Santee. Uh, Gary is married and the father of four children and 11 grandchildren. The church members regularly pray for the city council and its members, and uh, for this we are very grateful, and uh, so we say welcome once again. So once again, please pray for us tonight and pray for our country and those people that protect us across the nation and the world. So please rise for the uh, invocation followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you pray with me? Our Father, we thank you so much for your blessing and for your protection over our country and our city. We're very grateful for the freedoms that have been purchased at great cost. I pray for our mayor and our city council tonight that you would grant, uh, graciously grant them a listening ear and genuine understanding of the true needs of our people and city. Lord, wisdom to govern our city and provide real solutions for the issues that will be before them. Lord, grant them courage and patience to do what is right and just for our city and our citizens. And, Lord, the ability to work together in harmony even when there is honest disagreement. But we're very grateful for their service to our community. We pray you reward them for their sacrifices that they make. Bless their homes, their families, and their businesses. Lord, guide them tonight, we pray. And I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So we're going to get some fun stuff out of the way first, and I'm going to be first up with uh, giving a proclamation to Chris Jacob, and I see you out there, Chris, so I'm going to ask you to come up, followed by a presentation to, let's see, I think there's some young ladies out there that play soccer or football or <laughs> jump up in the air and cheer them on. I'm not really sure. We're going to, we're going to let Vice Mayor Koval give them her certificate, so Chris, come on down. Can you hear me out there? Yes, one, two, can you hear me? Okay. <laughs> I'm 
almost picked up that Diet Coke to give you, Chris. I'm going to go ahead and read this thing off, and then we'll uh, have some fun roasting here or something. It's not what you think. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you, sir. So Chris uh, is a uh, retired employee of the city of Santee, and he's done a lot of work for us. We've got to know him quite a bit over the last few years. Uh, people move up in our organization, and once you know it, sooner or later they get to retire. How great is that? So the Santee Proclamation, it says, Whereas Chris Jacob began his career in public service in 1987 at the city of San Diego, that wasn't his best decision, by the way. <laughs> Being a former San Diego <laughs> employee, I know. I was young. Well, so was I, yeah. Look at us now. <laughs> Um, he, he started as an associate assistant and junior planner in the planning department. And whereas Chris's career moved into community development when he joined the city of La Mesa as a senior planner in 1999. And whereas Chris started his three year career with the city of Santee in the development services department on September 16th, 2019, as a principal planner. He was instrumental in processing the Finita Ranch development and in guiding the approval of the city's housing element. He started the current iteration of the Arts and Entertainment District, which would allow for more innovative, creative, and enticing uses for the center of the city. And whereas Chris continued to thrive in his career through the COVID-19 pandemic and provided invaluable support across the organization, and especially as principal planner in the Department of Services upon the retirement of his, the, its director in December of 2021. That's where everybody had to step up. Uh, Chris officially retired from the city of Santee on December 28th, 2022, after a total of 35 years in public service. Now, therefore, I, John Minto, Mayor of the City of Santee, on behalf of the City Council, do hereby proclaim that Chris Jacobs, received due recognition and commendation for three years of outstanding service and dedication in the performance of his duties at the City of Santee, and much appreciation for exemplary uh, career in public service, wishing him the very best in retirement. Congratulations. And I'll probably get some pictures in a minute, but first, you guys want to open these up while he's here? Yeah, why not? yeah, let's do that. I'm going to give you that just in case it's something that we can I share later. I'll take the paper. Stainless steel, wide mouth bottle, premium insulated. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> Show everybody. This is your moment. We don't want you to forget us. And then, let's say for perhaps that you get tired of sitting around and you know decide to go do something someplace else. We have something else here for you. Something that you can put on your desk, or you know, maybe on the coffee table at home. Oh, oh, oh. oh. these these are uh, dark chocolates from Hershey. A whole mess of them. And a, an inscribed a City of Santee candy dish. Here you go. All right, thank you. You're welcome. And if you want to put that down right there, and I've got a microphone, so in case you want to say something. Then I'll put this stuff away while you're talking. How's that sound? Okay. Thank Great. You. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say I've worked for large agencies, small agencies. And I tell you, in a small agency like this, they don't have 19,000 employees. They've got you know, a, a, a limited staff, but, and they're very, very dedicated. They've worked days, nights, holidays, weekends. And it all starts with the leadership right here. So uh, thank you, Santee, for the recognition and really for everybody. Work. They, they really work their tails off, and uh, so I really appreciate it. Thank you. 
That's all you can say? I'm not even finished putting the away there. <laughs> Thank you very much. I knew. Uh, there's a, a picture of me, Marlene, for you. That's uh, me at, at Times Square. It was a national planning conference in 2017. And of course, the city is interested in establishing our entertainment district. And so that's, uh, I think that's got some lightning content. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you. All right. Anybody else have anything to say? I'll go first. Hey, Chris, you know what? I, you know, only three years here at the city, obviously, but your career over 30 years. Uh, with the rest of the agencies, you cannot be, you know, withdrawn. We we really appreciate your time that you were here and obviously being instrumental in keeping our planning department moving forward in the time you're here. So thank you. Thank you, sir. And, and Chris, I want to thank you for your uh, long career in public service. I know at times it can be challenging. Uh, he's done so much for the city in the short amount of time, but I just want to share, you know, the level that Chris goes to to help out the city. Um, he and I actually met in the parking lot of uh, Marietta's, I think, or close to Marietta's, and, wa and walked and drove around um, a bunch of different areas in Santee, in my district. But um, if you've seen the improvements on Mission Gorge in front of Chick-fil-A, you remember it used to be tall with weeds and stuff like that, and all the replanting and, and um, landscaping that has been done, that's because Chris never gave up making those people do what they're supposed to do and, and fix that. So it's the little things. It's making sure that, you know, um, our sidewalks are, are safe, uh, our landscape looks good, and, um, you know, there's, of course, he works with the, the whole city, but, you know, uh, just we don't want any area of Santee to look run down, and, and you're a big part of that. So thank you very much. I'll, I'll go ahead. Every, yep. Chris. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> I just want to say thank you very much for your service to the city of CNT. And more importantly to me, thank you so much for always having such a positive attitude. Uh, even when you weren't presented with such a great attitude from others on the other side, you, uh, you, you, you stood strong, you stood tall, and, um, and stayed humble through it all. And we thank you very much for uh, for just truly your dedication to our community and helping us get better with your leadership. So thank you very, very much for all you've done. Thank you. Rob? Job well done. And uh, we appreciate it. We did make your life miserable many times, so we apologize for that. But uh, job well done. You truly care about your job, cared about your, <laughs> about your job, and you, uh, you uh, did very good for the city, so we appreciate it. Yeah, here's here's the funny thing about when you first came here and started making presentations, you're very somewhat uh, demure, shy, kind of needed to come out. And you know, by the time you finished, we couldn't stop you from talking. <laughs> so, so here's what I want to do is I want to at least uh, take and present this to you, uh, so we can get that on television, and so everybody knows that you get your due recognition. So. Let's go ahead and look up at the camera, and we're going to hold it for about three seconds. How's that sound? <laughs> Sounds good. Here you go. Thank you again. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, bring, take, take your parting gifts with you, and okay. don't let the door hit you on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Really great city, and they're, they're working hard to lift everybody up here. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I think you're up there, uh, Vice Mayor. All right. I'll just take this one. All right. Turn, turn it on. Oh, okay. Is it on? No. No. Hello? It's off. Oh, I guess I'm still on. <laughs>
Hello? There we go. All right. If the Ravens can come on down to the front. So who's the coach here? Oh. <laughs> uh, I'll come over there. You, you come up front here with me. Um, <laughs> Go back in. We're all the coaches. Okay. Well, um, it might be obvious or it might not, but I used to be an athlete. <laughs> and when I saw on Facebook, uh, Samantha, is she here? No, she's not Oh, well. She posted on Facebook that you are three-time national champions. And I, thought, and I thought, we've got to recognize that. We've got to recognize that. So if you wouldn't mind telling a little bit about what it takes for these ladies, these young ladies to be athletes at this level, um, I think everybody here would love to know. Yeah, thank you. Um, so we start off our season back in August. Um, we make sure they train really hard. There's tons of conditioning. We do a lot of burpees. They love burpees. <laughs> uh, it's a lot of hard work. So we work harder than those football players. We don't have any gear. These girls are throwing each other up in the air. We're getting dropped. We're getting kicked. We had broken nose. We had concussions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but they work hard because we win every season, and they know they want these jackets. So they put in work. They miss dances. They miss family time to be here and represent our Santee organization. So, um, and we coaches put a lot on them. We make sure if we're here, you're here. They have to manage their schedules at home, their school, everything has to be balanced to make sure we're in this team and working together. So let's um, congratulate them one more time in our city of Santee, the national champions. Congratulations, everybody. And, and how about a cheer, a, a quick cheer?
figured out the air conditioning while you were gone. Thank you. How about a round of applause for our own chair leader? <laughs> now you know why I had her do that. <laughs> oh, so, so we need to get down to business here, and uh, we want to get out of here at some type of a decent hour. So uh, that takes us to the consent calendar. And uh, do I have any items to be added, deleted, or reordered? Uh, Council Member Hall? Nope. Vice Mayor Koval? None for me. Council Member Trotter? No, sir. Council Member McNellis? No, Mr. Mayor, I do not. I have none. City Manager? No, sir. City Attorney? No, sir. City Clerk? I have one speaker on item four. Item four? Okay, we will. Uh, do I have a motion to accept the calendar, consent calendar, except for item number four, so which moved. we will hear right Second. after? I have a motion and a second. Please prepare to vote and lock in the votes. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. That takes us to item number four, which is an adoption of a resolution authorizing the submittal of a grant application for, to the federal raise, which is Rebuilding American Infrastructure and Sustainability and Equity. Grant program for the State Route 52 improvements and finding the action is not a project subject to the California Environmental Quality Act. Who's going to give us a report on that? So I have a speaker, Asan or Alan. See, Alan. A reminder: you have three minutes, sir. Uh, yeah. Th th thank you. Thank you, Mayor. My name is Alan C. Uh, this is a long time coming. Since 1987, Transnet, we've been paying half cent sales tax. I love this, actually, actually putting money in the roads. We must remember, since 1987, we voted for roads, for all the freeways. So we need to keep fighting for that. And Mayor, if, I don't know how much you're going to indulge me on in this. We know about the mileage tax coming, so please fight against that. Because we have seven council members on the board right now, Sandag, who are not voted by due process of the entire population. So we need to strike down that way to vote at Sandag to stop this dreaded mileage tax. How can you tax us on roads already paid for? So please, Mayor Mento, I love what you're doing, but we need to get all the outside skirt mayors and keep our beautiful small towns have equal power at Sandak, because right now you have seven board members not elected by the entire population. That way to vote needs to be struck down today through the courts. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, that is item number four. Do we have any other speaker slips? No, sir. Um, if For you, item four? No, you, you had public comment. talk about the raise grant? What's your name? Audra. 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 She, she was confused with the... Mm -hmm. Just have her come up. Well, why don't you come on up and, and uh, we'll make sure we get all the paperwork right afterwards. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, by the way, if it turns out that it's more appropriate under another um, item on the agenda, I'll go ahead and stop you and have you wait till that item. Does that work for you? I mean, that's... Okay, <laughs> thanks. You know? Because we want to make sure that all the uh, testimony is in the right spot. Absolutely. Great. We thanks. don't want to make a mistake. <laughs> so um, so with Sandag, um, as uh, Alan was saying, you know, what's been going on, how they've been electing the board has been something where they can make sure that whoever is enforcing this stuff is complying with those who are telling them what to do. Because the assembly member, Lorena Gonzalez, introduced um, AB 805, which was enacted, and it gave San Diego 42% and Chula Vista 8% of all votes. Does that sound fair? Probably not, right? But the problem is, is that we're having vehicle miles travel taxes coming down the pipeline, and they want to make sure that people don't travel, basically. I mean, and, and you guys want to complete this by 2035 and use $53.5 million just for the first phase. Do you even know what the other phases are going to cost and if you're even going to have the funds to complete that? But with what they want us to do, which is not drive, 
and they're with the Sandags, all of their agenda is to make complete streets, make the speed limit slower, roundabouts, just basically de incentivize people to drive so that we use public transit and um, or walk, walk or bike. And the problem with that is, is that this brings us into like 15 minute cities. And, you know, where you're going to have to get a permit just to leave. And maybe you're not going to be able to see your family if you can't get that permit. So it's very dangerous what's going on here. And the fact that they don't, they're trying to get rid of cars by, gas cars by 2045. I mean, I don't understand like what this whole plan is, but it seems like a money grab, which is a lot of things that are going on in the county and all over the United States. So it's very um, dangerous to go down this path. And if you guys know what I'm talking about, then you should be doing something to stand against it. Because, you know, people come before officials all the time and they don't listen to the people. And you guys work for the people. And you have to listen to what we're saying and take that into con like consideration because you're supposed to represent us. And if you're not doing that, then you shouldn't be in that seat. But so I'm just asking that as you continue down this road. So are you... Are you on the Sandag board? You're you're going to be chair if if Nora isn't right. I mean, no. are you like a replacement? <laughs> what is your position? I'm a director. You're a director, that's so you where, know exactly. That's where they've kept me. You know exactly what I'm talking about. But exactly do they keep you there about. because you don't want to go along with it? I mean, you obviously wouldn't be on that board if you didn't agree with what they were doing. No, that's not true. Is that true. not true? Every uh, city is represented there. Right. I happen to be the representative for the city of Santee. Okay, so then can you do something to stand up against what they're doing to um, the people? I, I've, I've done plenty of that. Um, yeah, as a matter of fact, you talk to Alan later on. He can explain it in more detail. But I want, I want to address this. as a, I see what your nexus is on this item to the 52. And I can tell you that the 52 um, changes that we have proposed here to get these grants is uh, coming from the city of Santee and not from Sandag. The okay. only thing we're doing is making sure that they pay their fair share when it comes time. To get it the done. rest of the money is going to be through uh, federal, state, and state grants and private money. And then um, since we've paid the taxes for the freeways, they des and it goes to Sandag for the, as a funding agent. We expect them to kick in a portion of it, and then that money actually goes to Caltrans to do the work, because Caltrans is responsible for all the work on the freeways. So we're not we're doing something outside of a Sandag proposal or project. Well, would they require you to do the vehicle miles travel tax? No, that's completely separate. Just to get the money, they won't. No. And will you so, bring that into Mayor the Until the time is up, so we even took off the timer so that you could have the conversation. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I, we'll talk. Get hold of my office. We'll talk offline because there's we could spend hours on this. Really. Thanks. So, Audra, are you going to speak on six point five because you were unsure earlier? Well, I wanted to ask. Like, what I wanted to say about that is that when I'm asking you about what that. Um, lawsuit or claim is about you said i have to do a FOIA request you should have that in the agenda so that it's it's open to the public you shouldn't have to go and do a FOIA request just to get the information because it's been denied so i'm wondering why and you can't even give me that information but that should be open to the public without having to do a FOIA request because okay. i don't think it's that hard okay thank you right. thank you very much That's it. All right. Any council comments? Okay, let's vote then. And please lock in the vote. Vice Mayor Koval, can you lock in your vote, please? I'm trying. It's not working. Do we use my gavel? Usually it's me. <laughs> Motion carries unanimously. All right. Thank you, council. All right. That takes us to a non agenda public comment which is why I think majority of people are here tonight. Uh, we have um, in excess of 40 speaker slips on that. Yes. So tonight uh, we will um, be given two minutes, uh, but we do have um, to take care of our um, community development block grant uh, issues. And, yeah, you know, I don't think we need to have those folks sitting here for nearly two hours before they get a chance to speak. 
So what we're going to do is follow our regular protocol, which is we take either five speakers or we go the first round of non-agenda public comment for 15 minutes. So we can get seven speakers in for the first round of non-agenda public comment. So that's what we're going to do. And uh, I know that there's some people that uh, are opposed to um, the application uh, for uh, community block grant funding for the YMCA. Uh, we want to make it clear they have withdrawn their application, so they won't be in consideration for any money from the city of Santee. Um, so, uh, so what I do ask, though, again tonight, though, is if we can all be very respectful of one another because it's important for everybody to be heard. It doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on here. Please allow everybody to have their two minutes and hear what's being said. So I thank you very much for that. Clerk, would you call the first person? Blake, when you have two minutes, the microphone will be turned off after your two minutes. I am a homeowner within an HOA in the Hillcrest neighborhood of San Diego City. All Santee residents must request their city council member not renew the Santee government's or city's $1 lease with the YMCA, and the YMCA must then relocate to private land. The city is designing a government recreation center or center that it will be operating near the current YMCA. The city must take over the operation of the pool structure, which the city already owns, and incorporate it into the design of the new center. I'm a normal, out, gay, and biological male. I will explain one of the many points on why it is extremely important that the Democratic Party and all individuals become proud, anti-trans persons like I am. We all must be pro-healthy gay male community and support detransitioners and LGB Alliance USA. There is a natural experience that 100% of gays uniquely experienced during childhood called gay-induced opposite-sex envy or envy. The envy is experienced to varying degrees based on different environmental factors. Psychological associations or associations in gay men and lesbians are completely hiding this from the general public. The envy concept is most likely hidden to avoid outing closeted gay kids or kids, or hidden because of substantial shame. The unethical silence by associations and gays has created fake gender identity ideology, fake trans identifiers, and trans the gay away. Any gay or person with strong same-sex attraction feelings who states they never felt the envy during childhood is a zero-courage liar or has an extremely poor memory. Kids are not receiving the proper psychotherapy treatments they need when they struggle to self-manage their envy. The envy concept is being unethically and improperly labeled by associations as fake gender dysphoria. Associations are encouraging sex identity disorder in many kids and turning them into lifelong victims and cash cows for the healthcare industry. Currently in California, minors are getting their penises removed and breasts removed. Biological trans or true trans do not exist. Next speaker I have is Alan C. I have a slide presentation. Alan, for before you get started, Sorry. Um, if we could hold the applause, because it's a little bit hard for us to hear up here who the next speaker is being called uh, during the applause. So I know everybody really wants to, um, you know, uh, support the speakers, but let's make it easy for us up here. Or, or yeah, there you go. How about just one clap even? Because I want you to be able to express yourselves. So, great. So, thank you. Go ahead, Alan. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I have a slide presentation. I wish it was up on the big board, but it's not the public. It is in the binder, my slide presentation PowerPoint. So I'll try to rattle right through these. Uh, what's going on with the YMCA and all gyms? is actually a, a law, FE, FEHA law 2017 requires use of any restroom by any gender identity without, without need of going through surgery. Slide two. Anybody remember Wee Spa about back in 21? I don't know what the status on this gentleman, uh, what do you want to call for YMCA, but back in 2000, the same scenario happened at Wee Spa up in LA. In that case, the man claiming to be a woman went to a kid's restroom in the shower area and the LAPD waited six months later to admit the guy was already registered as a sex offender. Next slide, please, which uh, it's, it's on your screen you want to see. Liberty Health right now has 151 sex offenders registered in a three-mile radius near my community. 
How many are in this community that are paying, getting free home for life funded by the taxpayers, worse than criminals? How many of them sex offenders are not being monitored, will take advantage of the system, claim they're a woman, and use that kid's restroom? Next slide. However, you have an out outlet here. The 2017 law also requires our reparatum to respect the privacy interests of all employees. Employees shall provide feasible alternatives such as locking toilet stalls, and I repeat, staggered scheduled for showering. YMCA, why aren't you picking up on this instead of saying inclusive and gender for all when you are required to have staggered showers just like the malls have for family restrooms? The YMCA must have staggered showering when the kids are present. Me as an adult man, I would never go into a shower room when there are kids there. That is wrong. That's the fight. Because you'll never win against a trans. You'll never against race. Do it for the children. Because what's been happening is wrong. How much time they got? Six seconds. And by the way, the dollar, he's got a gym. How come he doesn't get a dollar and he has to pay full rent? So it's not right for the YMCA to get that. Thank you. Next speaker I have is Marcy Strange. Taxpayers demand you either cancel the YMCA's free use of Santee City property, or dollar, or force the YMCA to keep biological men out of women and girls' private areas. Please put this, their lease renewal on next month's agenda. In addition to being a member of Gays Against Groomers, I'm also a taxpayer and a mom. As a former co-ed YMCA soccer coach, I believe in equity. However, equity does not mean extreme privileges for some. Biological women and little girls must have their own private spaces. Transgenders have theirs too. It's called gender neutral bathrooms, as well as staggered pri private areas you just mentioned. When women and girls share bathrooms, locker rooms, and showers with biological men, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> One, it makes it easier for groomers and sexual predators to pose as transgenders. Two, it also gives harmless transgenders a bad reputation. Three, Males who identify as women have resulted in rape and sexual assault, not just in high school restrooms and bathrooms and locker rooms, but the same policies as the YMCA has in prisons, too. California co law conflict with each other, so nobody's safe. Today, indecent exposure is legal if a man identifies as a woman, really? That's not what taxpayers paid for or voted for. Biological genders must be separated and give it, excuse me, their own private spaces. Thank you. The next speaker I have is Susan Ash. And if everybody can remember to speak into the microphone so the record picks it up, please. Susan, I'm very nervous. It's my first meeting I've ever attended or spoken at. I first ask that you please put the YMCA lease topic on next meeting's agenda. I am a taxpayer, a mom, a natural born biological woman. I am XX chromosome American. I felt absolutely compelled to speak here tonight. I do live in East County and my daughters attended the YMCA for many years. I'm asking the city of Santee terminate the lease with the YMCA until they correct the dangers their current system has in place regarding women and children. I never dreamed we women would be set back so far so fast and watch our children also be put in this very dangerous position. I am here tonight to explain how deeply concerned I am about the diminishing rights and value we natural born biological women have across our society privacy and a reasonable expectation of safety in our shower facilities, changing and dressing rooms and bathroom facilities is common sense and must be ensured and guaranteed in certain settings. This is not negotiable. No one should have to deal with indecent exposure on a regular basis, but that is what is going on, what is being proposed and the precedent being set. We live in the real world. There is real evil. It is real and not imagined. 
violent sexual predators, pedophiles, and child molesters will use and do use any loophole to further target, harm, and abuse natural born women. Our tax dollars that we contribute are being used against us to diminish us and furthermore put us in danger and harm's way. Our government, corporations, schools, colleges, and tax dollars cannot be used to cater to every boutique issue and group. It's a very slippery slope with no end in sight. The rush to over-accommodate certain groups diminishes safety for women and children, the most vulnerable in society. The next speaker I have is Ben Richards. All right. Good evening. I'm Ben, and uh, I'm the founder of SoCal Parent Advocates. I'm not anti-LGB. I'm not anti-trans. I was here in the last city council meeting. Uh, very proud to have so many patriot friends doing their civic duty because we need to stand up about what's going on here. And the fact of the matter is there are some people who in this militant trans community that no matter how many bathrooms you make for them, it can have a golden toilet with heated seats and a bidet and a rain shower. They don't want to use that bathroom. They want to use the locker room where our daughters go in, right? So I'm here to say that this is violent towards me and my boundaries and my family. So I'm here standing up. Here's an interesting thing. This division right here, I was just up in Oceanside Unif uh, Unified. It's the same thing there. Before that, I was in Temecula Valley. And as a veteran, I am very sad to see this, but I don't know the way forward. I asked Mr. Mayor some questions like legislatively. You know, I know there's legislative things that are tying our hands, but I do know this. It's wrong, and I will continue barreling forward yard by yard because this is not right for my family and the families of these parents back here. So I'm going to do a call to action. Our movement is growing. And we're going to have to pick sides now. So to everyone, you need to get on social media. This is how we organize. This is how we organize in this region. And I'm going to say this. We need to bring faith back in the families because I've been starting to read the Bible to my children. And we're going to armor them up against this ideology. Thank you all. Next speaker I have is Koss or Loss, L-O-S. The next speaker? It's L O S or C O S, Lex at San Diego? He's outside right now, so can I step in for him? I'm uh, from. You submitted a speaker slip? Yeah. Right when he did, what was the name? Ryan. We'll switch it out. Go ahead. All right. Um, hey, guys. Um, I just wanted to come up here, and it was good to hear the news that um, that you guys suspended the lease for the YMCA for now. But, like, we need to continue to pursue um, to do the right thing. Um, you know, I, 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 I have, I'm a parent. You know, I have a, a daughter, and uh, I want to protect and to speak up at least to protect my daughter. And, uh, you know, it's just really weird to see the news going on these days, how dark it's getting. And um, I would just encourage to um, seek the Lord right now because the Bible speaks about what to do for our instructions on life. And um, America was founded on biblical principles. So we should um, it, we should do well to look back and see where this country started and where we're going. See, because right now the 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 um, basically you guys are in charge with a big high wall, you know, and it's like breaking down slowly, but you don't see it. So like God's going to break it if we don't stop and look and assess what's going on, you know. So what's going on is darkness. And, um, you know, I just want to say like with the last uh, like encouragement um, to give you guys is that Israel 
you know, is a nation that we can look to also. If you don't want to look to the Bible, you can look to God's people, right? If you want to go to church, that'd be a good place to start. But Israel started this uh, nation. And if you guys want to know more about that, just look at the Bible and the Constitution. So if you guys think that um, it's not going to change, we're going to keep going. It's going to grow. The movement's going to happen, you know, whether we like it or not, you know, because we're standing up for what's right and it's not going to stop. You know, until Jesus comes back. So God bless you guys, and thank you for my for spending time. Thank you. Right. The next speaker I have is Alicia. Alicia. How many speakers is this? This this is the last for seven for the first non-agenda public comment. Hi, I'm Alicia with Lexit. Um, and please put the YMCA uh, agenda for next week. Uh, we will be back. Um, you guys said that the lease is terminated, but we want to make sure. You know, I need to uh, clarify that. We have not done anything with the lease. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know where that came up. But. Okay. Um, well, City Council, it's a shame that we have to come here and protest peacefully. Obviously, your godly values have been pushed to the side. We are here to remind you God's values needs to be priority as the children should be priority. Please protect the children from harm. Uh, please protect the women as well. God says in his word, Luke 17, verse 2, it will be better for them to be thrown into the sea with a millstone tied around their neck than to cause one of these little ones to stumble We don't want to come back and do this again. I mean, we're taking time from our family. We're taking time from our rest. And we're going to keep coming here to this, um, here in Santee and keep doing this wherever, with any city. This is what Lexit does. So this is what we're going to keep doing and we're going to keep pushing. We're going to keep coming up here. We're going to keep speaking. We're going to keep peacefully protesting wherever we have to go. And we just hope that this changes and we just hope that you have, you know, common sense. These children need to be protected. The women need to be protected. I'm a survivor of, of, of a child uh, molestation, and I'm a rape survivor as an adult. And this is why I'm here. I don't want to see any other child be hurt or any woman be hurt again. This is, this is something that we're going to keep on speaking on and keep on doing. So God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. No further speakers? All right, that takes us to item number eight, which is a public hearing to assess community development needs and to solicit proposals for program year 2023 community development block grants, also known as CDBG, and home program funding consistent with the consolidated plan and finding the action is not a project subject to the California Environmental Quality Act. Good evening, Mayor Minto, Vice Mayor Koval, and City Council members. This is the first of two public hearings to identify community needs and to prioritize community development grant funding for the upcoming program year. Staff also reports on the home program at this time. During this meeting, staff will highlight the CDBG program requirements and give an overview of the applications submitted by community service providers or nonprofits. It's at this meeting that applicants may address the City Council on the merits of their applications. Staff will return on February 22nd to ask for direction on activities to be funded and included in the City's next annual action plan. The objective of the CDBG program is to improve housing, public services, capital infrastructure, and economic opportunities for low to moderate income persons. Eligible uses of CDBG funds are divided into three categories, which are public services, program administration, and public facilities or infrastructure. HUD has not announced the city's annual allocation amount for program year 2023, which is July of 23 through June of 2024, 
Therefore, staff has estimated that the city will re receive roughly 291,000 for planning purposes. This estimate is the average of the allocations over the past three years. Do, do, do. The home programs provides funds to state and localities to provide housing opportunities for low-income persons. Historically, the city has utilized home funds for the first-time homebuyer program. The city of Santee participates in a consortium with the cities of Carlsbad, Encinitas, La Mesa, San Marcos, Vista, and the county of San Diego for federal home monies to, afford, to fund affordable housing programs and to administer the program. During calendar year 2022, one loan for the purchase of Santee Home was completed in the amount of about $44,000. Only, and only three loans were completed countywide. This chart shows how the total estimated amount for program year 2023 was calculated. No carry forwards occurred this year because the unexpended program year 2021 funding is being used for the ADA pedestrian ramp project. The total estimated amount of available for allocation is $290,955. This table is in the staff report and lists the three activity categories for which, which may be funded. HUD regulations place caps or funding limits on activity categories. The cap calculations are based on annual allocations and program income, but exclude prior year carry forwards. Public services is capped at 15% of the allocation. Administrative activities, which includes fair housing, is capped at 20%, but public facilities or infrastructure are not capped. A notice of funding availability, or a NOFA, was published in the city's web, was published in the newspaper, posted on the city website, and emailed to interested parties on December 9th, 2022. Eight requests were received by the January 9th deadline. This slide shows the seven applications that were received for public service activities, the amounts requested, and the amounts these applicants were allocated in the current program year. As you know, earlier this week, the Cameron Family YMCA rescinded their application for funding. And as you may recall, the Santee Santos Foundation did not submit an application last year due to substantial donations re received resulting in a lack of need. A summary of applications received in each category can be found in attachment two to the staff report. Additionally, a copy of each application is also included in attachment three to the staff report. The slide shows proposed administrative activities, the amount requested and the amounts allocated in the current program year. A copy of the CSA San Diego County application is also included in attachment three to the staff report. An increase of 5,000 for CSA San Diego's request is the first in five years and is commensurate with increases requested from other five cities they serve. This slide shows the proposed or estimated public facilities slash infrastructure funding. The proposed $189,130 would be allocated towards, um, to be allocated towards program 2023 public infrastructure would be used for a future phase of the ADA pedestrian ramp project. <laughs> Staff recommends the City Council open the public hearing, receive testimony, and continue the public hearing to February 22nd. On February 22nd, the City Council can decide on the funding requests and amounts. Finally, staff will return in April with a draft annual action plan for program year 2023 that incorporates the direction provided by the City Council on the 22nd. This concludes my report. I am available to answer any questions that you may have. And Thanks. just Thanks. as you know, many of the applicants are here. Yeah. Speaker slips. I, uh, the first speaker I have is Deborah Martin. Your elder help. Oh, here. Deborah, before you get started, I'm going to ask uh, for uh, applicants. Um, if you are speaking tonight, please make sure that you're in the room and on your way up to the front so that we uh, can move along. Thanks. Go ahead, Deborah. Um, well, 
this is an uh, unusual night for us as well, so thank you for allowing us the time to speak to all of you. Uh, I'm Deb Martin. I am the Executive Director of Elder Help. Uh, we've been helping seniors remain independent and live with dignity in their homes for nearly 50 years. We do that through a stable of services, including care coordination, housing services, transportation, home safety maintenance, and food services, just to name a few. 96% of our clients have low to moderate incomes making it difficult to pay for basic needs like housing, food, medical insurance. Elder Health makes sure that seniors have access to social support, food, transportation, the med medical and social activities, and are connected to resources and benefits. We're proud of our almost 20-year partnership with the City of Santee since 2004. Our request is to serve approximately 56 Santee residents, plus we also provide a stable of pantry services to about 15 clients at Meadow Lark Senior Housing, Senior Apartments. This is less than a, uh, excuse me, the grant request is less than a quarter of a total cost of providing services to Santee. This fiscal year, we've already seen a significant increase in demand for services in Santee. We have 17 Santee residents receiving ongoing medical care coordination services, 30 receiving information referral, Last year, we served almost 60 residents, and we're expecting a 25% increase this year. Our services to the city also include partnering and working closely with city staff to find services for senior residents, making monthly pantry deliveries to Meadowbrook Senior Apartments to approximately 15 residents in need. Our most requested services for Santee residents are nutrition services, transportation, and companionship. In the interest of time, I'm going to cut my remarks short. Thank you so much for your time and consideration, and we look forward to partnering in the new year. Mr. Mayor, I have a question. Before you leave? Yep. <clears throat> you said, yeah, oh. you said you expect a 25% increase. Where, does, where is that number coming from? Most of our funding comes from just good old getting out there writing grants. We try to write about no, I'm sorry. You, you said you have a, you, you expect a 25% increase oh, in requests oh, yes. for services. Sorry, I thought Where you do you come up with 25% increase in requests for services? Where are the increases coming from, you said? Where, where, are you, where did you come up with 20, you're expecting 25% more? We're doing what we've more. already done this year, this fiscal year, compared to where we were last fiscal year. We look at where we are last fiscal year, our year to date, where we're trending, and we're trending at least 25% higher thus far this year over last year. Thank you. That's what I needed to know. Thank welcome. you very much. Next Hi. speaker is Tanya Hendricks with Santee Santos. Good evening, uh, Mayor Minto. Tanya, the whole, the whole lectern goes down, too. There's a, but, there's a button on the side there. There's Thanks, a button that takes it all down for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Dustin. Okay. Uh, good evening, Mayor Minto. Oh. <laughs> and city council members. I'm Tanya Hendricks, president of Santee Santa's Foundation. This year, Santee Santa's is respectfully requesting a $5,000 share of the CDBG um, well, the grant. As the city council has supported our community service efforts for many years, so we've supported the Santee community. We ensure Christmas spirit by providing food, books, toys, and good cheer to families and individuals during the holiday season. We have an emergency fund program to offer assistance to Santee residents for unexpected emergency situations, um, such as in the case of residential fires. In recent years, we've expanded our efforts. In uh, 2021, we hosted a toy giveaway opportunity at the Santee Holiday Tree Lighting Ceremony, offering free toys to any child attending the event. During the COVID pandemic, we provided regular and customized food deliveries to homebound seniors. And in the 2022 season, we served homeless families identified by the school district staff with specialized foods and gifts which benefit persons living in their car or on hotel vouchers. We are very proud of our 70-year service record to Santee residents. We ask that you remember our service record as you negotiate the amounts allotted to each good cause. Please know that we are appreciative and good stewards of the funds given to our organization. Last year, when we were comfortable with our monetary outlook and projected expenses, we withheld our CDBG application in order to allow opportunity and funds to go to other groups. Every year brings challenges, and we have deemed it prudent to submit our application once again. We offer something for everyone living in Santee. 
Families and seniors benefit from the holiday food boxes and the spirit we deliver. Children receive toys, books, and games, hand-chosen and gift-wrapped, especially for each child. And our community volunteers relish the opportunity to give back during the season of giving. Our efforts have a positive winning effect for everyone involved. Santee Santa's is a completely volunteer organization. 100% of all monies received goes directly to the recipients and the cost incurred to provide these items and services. We've been happy to answer the call for assistance from the city of Santee in the past and today for 2023, we hope you will answer our call for help and funding for our future programs. Thank you. Oh, and it was nice to see you, Dustin and Mayor Minto. I want to see you, the rest of you, next year. Are, are you talking about wrapping gifts? Oh, yeah. You wrapped gifts. You delivered. I, I, I'll, remind you, I'll remind you the Rotary was making boxes. Oh, were you there? Yes, I was. I apologize. <laughs> But thanks for calling. But, but well, thanks for calling us out. That, that was on the behalf of the Rotary. That was not on behalf of Ron Hall. So <laughs> Ron Hall was there. <laughs> the next speaker I have is Dennis Martins with Santee Food Bank. Yeah, you can't get away with anything. I'm going to need to bring this up back up for me. So, uh, honorable mayor and city council members, of course, my name is Dennis Martins, and I come before you this evening on behalf of the Santee Food Bank. First off, as the president of the board of the Santee Food Bank, I want to thank you for the 40 year relationship we have had with the city of Santee and the many funds we have received over their years. Without your support, we would not be able to do what we do. And speaking of what we do, this last calendar year, 2022, the Santee Food Bank served 6,258 households, accounting for 19,012 individuals in Santee alone. As a satellite food pantry for the San Diego Food Bank, we also served an additional 3,483 households, totaling to 14,000 797 individuals outside of Santee, bringing the total number of households served to 9,741 and the total number of individuals served to 33,799, resulting in a 24% increase in households and a 35% increase in individuals over 2021. Last year when I came before you, I said we had projected a 3% increase. Boy, were we wrong. With uh, ongoing COVID issues compounded by the inflation situation, the need for food has only grown and will continue to grow until the problems are resolved. With this in mind and based on the numbers for this January, we are anticipating a 7.5 increase in households and a 12. 5% increase in individuals for 2023. Of course, none of this could happen if it were not for the great group of volunteers we have who do the food pickups, sorting of food products, keeping the facility clean, and most importantly, getting food to those who really need it. It also would not be possible if it were not for the generous residents of Santee who provide food through the Stamp Out Hunger Program, the Sprouts, grab and give. In addition, people come by on a regular basis and donate food. We also receive food through Santee food retailers, through San Diego, Feeding San Diego, and the Catholic Charities. With all this being said, we once again are asking for $20,000. We look forward to a continuing and ongoing relationship with the city of Santee as we work together to reduce food insecurities in both the city of Santee and surrounding communities. Thank you for this opportunity to speak to you. Thank you. Tim Ray with Meals on Wheels. Good evening, folks. I want to respect your time this evening. So uh, my name is Tim. I'm from Meals on Wheels in uh, East County. 
and Meals on Wheels respectively request $5,000 to cover the cost for food and packaging for 97 low-income seniors and disabled vets in Santee. Meals on Wheels were more than a meal. We not only provide affordable food, but we also have a wonderful volunteer staff that actually provides social visits as well as do a safety check. So um, many of our clients are actually isolated. So many of them don't have family, friends, or neighbors to check on them. So we rely heavily on our volunteers to do that. So again, I appreciate all the support you guys have given us over the years, and we look forward to working with you folks again. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. John Hasek with Smart. Wow. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. My name is uh, John Hasek, and I am the Santee Mobile Home Owners Action Committee President. I'm actually here for the CSA San Diego. They are a housing element that does mediation, counseling, referral resources, because basically my organization deals with housing issues. A lot of times I have to work, or I do work hand in hand with CSA, both vice versa. They may refer someone to me so that I can help them understand what they can do and vice versa where I can refer out. They're invaluable to our community and have been invaluable over the years. Through the 15 years I would say that I've been within the community, that's how I started to know them. This is how long the dedication is that I know of that they've been serving our community. I personally had to use them when I first moved into Santee myself. That's how good and that's how valuable they are to our community. Both Estella and George and their staff do a phenomenal amount of work on behalf of our citizens that go unnoticed and un unheard of. I'm here as an advocate for our housing and for our community to let them know and to remind you guys as a city council, they are worth your investment. This is a no-brainer. Thank you so much. Next speaker is Stella De Los Rios. <laughs> For us shorties. Good evening, uh, Honorable Mayor, and good evening, City Council. Um, it's an honor to be here in front of you again. Um, thank you, first of all and foremost, for all the support you've given our agency. Our Fair Housing Agency has been um, in existence since 1969, uh, 54 years of service, and we are very honored to be uh, your Fair Housing Provider. With your support, we've been able to assist low-income families uh, we are a HUD-approved agency now. We probably have five HUD-approved counselors. Uh, we have uh, several HUD and federal uh, grants, um, and we also are, par we are partners and a member of the National Fair Housing Alliance in Washington, D.C., which is a federal agency. So I'm proud to say we do have several programs that are uh, accessible. We just received a new grant recently for first-home time buyers, which most of the funding is for closing costs and down payments for clients, but they have to be low income to moderate. So I'm very um, pleased to announce that. Um, we have a lot of issues that our counselors who speak uh, four languages uh, address here in Santee, mostly with the mobile home parks. And thank you very much, John. We work very uh, collaboratively together. And just recently, Senator, uh, Brian Jones has requested that we work and do more work in the mobile home parks because there's, there's more need for uh, information. So we'll be doing some of the uh, advocacy and outreach uh, for Santee mobile home parks, which you know is mostly uh, here in uh, the city. So um, with that said, thank you again. Um, we have a lot of work to do, and I'm hoping that you will support us again. Uh, and being your fair housing uh, provider. So I'm open for any questions from any of you. Thank you very much for letting me speak. Steve Anderson, Crisis House.
Hello, thank you for letting me talk here. I'm going to keep my speech short, partly in recognition of your time and partly because I hate public speaking. <laughs> and so you decide which one to go with on that one. So I work for Crisis House. I'm the director of programs there. I wanted to say thank you. I'm here for two reasons. One is to thank you for your help last year and to thank you for your help next year. <laughs> um, Crisis House is uh, social services. We've moved to Santee. We're, we're the go-to agency for homeless um, support for people in Santee and for domestic violence services. We use the money that we, the funds that we get from you to leverage with other grants to provide a, a big, a big, uh, a lot of different kinds of services that I won't go into talking about right now. But what we do do mostly, and what I'm most proud of is in how it really helps Santee, is that we really keep our finger on the pulse of the homeless people and the homeless population in Santee. A couple of weeks ago, we did the point in time count with the, the, the whole county, and the, the um, RTFH turned to uh, Crisis House to lead the Santee um, coalition to go out and find homeless people. We know people in the streets and the riverbeds, and we work to, with the homeless people to help them overcome the barriers to housing and eventually get permanent housing. Um, it's, um, sometimes, so we're the go-to agency for that. And um, we also run, we also have a um, crisis line that people call us all the time to, if they need something and we refer them to other, we refer them to, uh, there are programs or to other programs. So thank you for your support. We are, um, appreciate working in Santee and um, thank you very much. Next speaker is Consuelo. Okay, next speaker is Christina Peranio. Voices for Children. Can you say your name again, please? Yes, Christina Peranio with Voices for Children. Thank you. May I do this? It's at the top. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We're at the top. Thank you so much. On behalf of all of us at Voices for Children, I want to thank you, thank you, all of you, the mayor and the city council, for the uh, CDBG grant that you awarded us for the past three years and for the opportunity to talk about our program this evening. We're so grateful for your support of children in foster care. Your CDBG awards have enabled us to provide CASA services to six children since the first grant award. Voices for Children's CDB, CDBG application to the city of Santee this year is for the CASA program. A CASA stands for Court Appointed Special Advocate. They are community volunteers who are trained by Voices for Children and then matched with a single child or sibling group in foster care. A CASA volunteer gets to know a child, learns about their situation, and advocates on behalf of that child in court and in the community. CASAs, CASAs are often the one person on a child's case that is not required to be there and has no self-interest other than the best interests of the child. CASAs first participate in 35 hours of training prior to being matched with a child, and Voices for Children continues to support the CASA throughout the duration of the time they're on and matched with a child's case. Just to give an example, some of the ways that a CASA volunteer advocates for a child are facilitating visitation between siblings who are placed apart so that they can maintain their family bond, helping a child cope with his mother's passing, advocating for individualized education program or IEP meetings to take place on a time. Um, on time so that a child could receive updated and beneficial educational services as soon as possible, and serving as a trusted adult during a really tumultuous time in a child's life. The CASA program supports the nationwide CDBG goal of benefiting low-income residents, but our program also supports the City of Santee's local priority of providing public services to improve the quality of life for special needs populations of which foster children in foster care are included. Our grant request will uh, support four children from the city of Santee with a CASA volunteer, and the funding will be used to recruit, train, match, and support new CASA volunteers um, as they advocate on behalf of these children in foster care. Also, just which has nothing to do with our application or does, but just to let you know that there are currently seven residents from Santee who are active CASAs right now supporting children in foster care. Um, lastly, I just want to say thank you again very much for your support and the opportunity to talk a little bit more about the program, and I'm happy to answer any additional questions that you might have. Thank you. The final speaker I have is Alan. I think he's going to put a slide up before I start speaking, if it's okay. Oh, it's right there. It's right here. Pardon me. Thank you, sir. Apologies to later. It's one that shows all the different news of this. Just a minute. You're getting there. The one 
that shows the meals and wheels, all that. Yeah, we're almost there. That's what. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you so much for doing that, sir. Okay, we're looking at uh, a few organizations. While charity is a noble cause, let's look at what happened the last couple of years. Through COVID, how many businesses were shut down? So we have, uh, it's not on the screen. It's going to go back to the timer. So. Oh, okay, yeah, I want it on the screen if I could, because that's my presentation, is to point this out. It's, can you, it's not going to do okay. it. It's okay, gonna go okay. To okay. The anyways, timer. you saw on there for a second a few organizations. Well, Charities and Orville College, first question to ask, what's your take-home salary, Mr. Nonprofit, Miss Nonprofit? Well, charities and all cause, we taxpayers are suffering. You seen the price of eggs lately because of Prop 12? 2018, Prop 12 would infect only 2022. All hands must be cage-free, which affected all eggs sold in California. That's why eggs are doubled. You know why your heating bill went 400% higher? Because they passed $6.5 billion on the natural gas suppliers. That's why we were all suffering, because gas is evil. Well, you got seven, I believe, businesses here that want this free money, I pointed out earlier, for example, the YMCA, yet that gym didn't get a grant. That laundromat didn't get a grant. What you're doing, I have a tattered piece of paper here, a copy of something dated July 4, 1776. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The key word is pursuit. By you giving a grant to just certain select groups, you're taking away that group's desire to pursue and to succeed. No, grants is evil. Outreach is evil, and equity to put certain groups, certain people above everybody else is wrong. Do not give out any grants to anybody. Let the free market sort it out, because right now all these organizations I see on there do not pay their fair share of taxes. I do not like taxes, but I'm paying more tax because these groups are already exempt, and now you're going to give them a grant? You're going to get a dollar fee for YMCA? You're going to give Meals and Wheels, the guy that's sharply dressed, the custom badge? How about your take-home salary, sir? We people are suffering here, us taxpayers. And anytime you take money from the feds, yeah, that's money from the feds. But you know what? You and I pay for it, and our children pay for it. What you should be doing is say, I don't want that federal fund. Give that back to the taxpayer so we can have our own sustainability. Thank you. No further speakers. Thank you, Bill. So that concludes my presentation, and I don't know if you have any questions. <laughs> I know that's why everyone's here. Questions? Council? No. Okay. Sean? You have... I mean, I think you, you want to take action on the recommendation, though, so that you can continue the hearing. Right. You know, I've... I've got something on my screen here that's blocking half the, the words, so um, I guess I need, I need a motion to uh, continue to February 22, 2023. So moved. Okay. I'll um, second it. Thank you. At least I'm pretty sure that's what it says here. Yeah. Motion sure. carries unanimously. It's not a touch screen. <laughs> uh -oh. Sorry, folks. I think I just turned it off. See if a reboot works. Bye, Marie. Bye, Diana. <laughs> Bye, Tanya. <laughs> Bye, Charlie. That was what you're, you're, you've cut up the pack there at the end there, so. <laughs> All right. Um, Hey, Charlie, when you get started, it's terrible when you know people. All right, that takes us uh, back to non-agenda public comment. 
And we will continue with uh, uh, two minutes for each of our um, speakers. Are you ready, sir? We're ready. Lo is it Lowe's? Cost or Lowe's LOS from Lexit? Okay, next speaker is Corbin. Just a, uh, to let you know that if you see one of us leave the dais up here, it might be to use the restroom or something, but we also are able to hear what you're saying in the back room. So it's not like we're missing anything. Go ahead, sir. Hello. Two weeks ago, I addressed the council, and I said that we must agree on basic fundamental truths if we are going to continue to function as a society. If we cannot, we will tread into an unprecedented and a potentially dangerous future. To be clear, I want to encourage everyone to acknowledge how someone feels. After all, that is Empathy 101. But it must be made clear that feelings do not alter reality. We can all acknowledge that a man feels as though he is a woman, but that does not make him a woman for the same reason that I am not a cat, even if I feel as though I'm a cat. Saying that a man who identifies as a woman should not be in the woman's bathroom is not coming from a place of hatred. I condemn those accusations. Rather, those accusations are disingenuous, filled with hate, and frankly harms the public, public good by spreading dangerous misinformation as no one is saying that transgender people are harmful. That is another lie based in hate and deception. So here's the deal. As a, as a society, we have two options. We remain grounded in truth, logic, and reality, or we bend reality in an effort to affirm feelings, pursue inclusivity, and equity. If we do that, we will undoubtedly allow actual predators to prey on the vulnerable, or even worse, allow pedophilia to demand acceptance in our society, because after all, if a man can identify as a woman based off feelings, why can't a man also identify as a child based off feelings? If gender can be a social construct, why can't age also be a social construct? I can only hope none of this happens here in CNT before the council decides to be brave and take a stance to preserve reality. The reality that men are men and women are women. Again, we either live in truth, logic, and reality, or we do not. In closing, I am calling upon the CNT City Council to encourage the Cameron YMCA to reverse its stance on their position, which allows men who refer to themselves as transgender to enter a woman's locker room. And if the YMCA does not, as unfortunate as this is, I am calling upon the council to terminate the lease with the Cameron YMCA as keeping society grounded in reality, truth, and logic is more important than any service a YMCA can offer to any community. Thank you. Next speaker I have is Tracy. My name is Tracy Till and I am a longtime Santee resident. Four weeks ago, I stood in my kitchen making dinner for my kids while I watched a brave young lady address you, our Santee City Council. I immediately shared her address as far and wide as I could. It made international news. Tonight, the eyes of the nation are upon us. For the sake of the innocence of children and the dignity and modesty of women, my red line has been drawn. I am asking that our council put forth a motion to discuss and review on the next agenda ending our lease to the Cameron Family YMCA. Other wonderful options could be Santee Parks and Rec facility, or it could be taken over by one of the many new schools in, in East County that desperately need the space. With that said, please take this dollar as a deposit and the Till Family Trust will be happy to take the lease over. You can even add a few zeros to the end of it. Next speaker I have is Melissa O'Connor. Melissa O'Connor. Good evening, council members, Mr. Mayor. My name is Melissa, and I come to you not speaking out of fear, but with certainty and resolve. What is a woman? I am a woman. The first, time I breast, the first time I breastfed my first child, I placed my baby on my chest, and he quickly crawled to my nipple. Even after being born premature at 34 weeks gestation, innately and with intention, he was able to find his source of life me. My baby knew that I was a woman. 
The root cause of why we are gathered here tonight is that we have allowed a small group of bullies to change our language, silence our dissent, and create policies based off a greater than, less than model. We are facing a society that is arguing that a grown man is more vulnerable than our children. Is there any other time in history where this has been the case? The Young Men's Christian Association needs to simply be called the Y. W H Y. <laughs> Why have you abandoned your Christian values? Why are you a place of refuge for only one part of the population but not others? Why do you have a revenue of $6.2 billion a year globally with more than 64 million beneficiaries in 120 countries, but, you are only, but you're a registered 501c3 nonprofit? Why as a nonprofit are you beholden to California policy trends and not the beliefs of, beliefs of your founders or the large number of your members? We've gathered here tonight from all over San Diego County to ask you, the City Council of Santee, to cancel your dollar year lease with the Y until they change their policy. To the small trans army, I'm not afraid of you. We are not going to surrender our identity nor our right. The next speaker I have is Rachel Ashley. Thank you for your time. Um, I don't have anything prepared. I just kind of go off it, so we'll see how this goes. Um, I am here for support for you to put on the agenda next week to discuss the YMCA lease. Now, there's something about transgenders. Obviously, there's no vetting process about what a transgender is. So basically, there's a couple of things. Any heterosexual man who is a sexual predator can just come forth, and usually those people have nothing to lose, I'm sorry, everything to lose and nothing to gain. Now, I know that most of us are parents, and when our little kids were babies, we would do anything to fiercely protect our children. And it doesn't matter whether they are an infant, a toddler, or they are 23 years old. We will always protect our kids. And that doesn't make us bigots. Because what's happening is there is this immense pressure for politicians, for council members, for board of supervisors to cave in to this ideology of, you know, what the YMCA says about everyone's welcome at the YMCA. But if we are putting the safety of women, children, and minors, and we're sacrificing that, then equity, inclusion, and diversity is nothing but woke rhetoric. And that's what's happening today is you will be called bigots. I will be called a bigot. Everyone here who is in support for women and children's safety will be called a bigot because we are not giving in to the culture. And just because it has, the world is ever-changing does not mean it has to. We can still keep our feet grounded and have that foundation of what we are here to be called for. And that is to protect our children at all costs. And that doesn't mean that we are discriminating against anybody. It means that we need to stand for truth and stand for always protecting our children. So, thank you. Next speaker I have is Sh Sherry or Sheree. Good evening. My name is Shari. I am the founder of a local nonprofit that recovers missing and exploited individuals. While the majority of our recoveries have been children, we have recovered adults as well. Our organization will assist anyone who requests assistance, no matter what, no matter when. Over the last 20 months, we've recovered 26 survivors and assisted law enforcement in recovering many others. More often than not, these individuals had been or were actively being sexually assaulted and or exploited. More than 50% of these recoveries were from this community specifically. We do not discriminate. Our personal beliefs do not interfere with our mission to recover any one individual. Missing is missing. <clears throat> What is occurring at the YMCA is not about equality and inclusiveness. This is a safety issue. Perhaps the one individual that sparked all of this is not a registered sex offender, but this policy creates an opportunity for predators to have access to our most vulnerable. What I had not heard until tonight was anybody addressing the concern for predators utilizing this inclusiveness law as a tool to gain access to their victims. This is occurring. Registered sex offenders are taking advantage of this inclusiveness law and using it as an avenue to find their next victim in other arenas. 
What is the YMCA doing to ensure that this is not occurring at their facility? As far as my research has uncovered, they're doing nothing. If the city of Santee refuses to stand up for women and children by refusing to terminate this lease with the YMCA until such time that they take drastic measures to ensure the safety of all women and children, you are complicit and you are a part of the problem. You are contributing to the potential sex abuse and or sexual exploitation, exploitation of women and children. I stand here tonight urging you to place this on the next meeting's agenda and to please take all of this information into consideration or at the very least insist on change in the YMCA policies before agreeing to continue to extend their lease. Thank you. Next speaker I have is Greg Denham. Mayor John, honor. Honored to be with all of you, and thank you for your service to this great city and uh, stepping up and leading. And um, listen, I, I just want to maybe bring a little different perspective. Um, I pastor a church, a Rise Church. I'm also the uh, host of World News Briefing on his channel. And uh, needless to say, we live in a unique time. Uh, COVID has been an accelerator. It's revealed the fault lines in our culture it has revealed the fractures in our culture. It's also revealed that there's certainly a darkness behind the darkness, but this is nothing new. I mean, when Jesus looked upon the multitudes, he was moved with compassion, and he saw them as sheep without a shepherd. That speaks of vulnerability. They needed proper boundaries. And of course, he, he came to be the solution. Um, and we live in a broken world, and he gave himself on the cross, and I believe that the solution is that we need to be born again. If one doesn't embrace that, a love still needs to lead. And that's what I just want to end with, because love protects and love nourishes. That's what the Bible says. And uh, we are called to love God. We're called to love each other. When we stand uh, to protect children, we pr stand to protect women, we are loving them. We're always doing the right thing. And when we don't do that, we're not loving them. It really is a form of evil. So I just, um, I'm praying for you, and I thank you guys for your leadership. I think we're at really a Churchill or Chamberlain moment, to be frank with you, which is we're either going to like face reality, call it for what it is, do the right thing, or we're going we're gonna to be like a Chamberlain and attempt to negotiate with influences that we're going to be unable to control and are going to morph to impact us in an adverse Next way. Next speaker I have is Jason Neese. Jason. My name is Jason Neese. I'm a resident here in San Diego County. I'm a husband, father of six. I'm a marriage and family therapist, an ordained pastor, and I work for the largest farm company that distributes organic produce in this great state. I'm here in reference of a man showering in a woman's locker room at the Santee YMCA. We've been told uh, to shut up. We've been told to just go along with what our government says, to just sit on the couch and bitch about being a victim. I'm tired of this nonsense. I'm here today because our entire culture is dominated by weak, neutered, castrated, effeminate, passive, weak, woke and worthless inactive men. Some of you, some of you I'm speaking directly to, some of you are in front of me, some of you are behind me. I will not be passive about this subject. Passive men are part of the problem. Passive men watch evil men rule. Passive men watch wrong men make decisions. We are not here to be passive. I am not passive in my marriage. We cannot be passive with our children. Once your daughters turn 13, once my daughter turns 13, I certainly as hell can't be passive. Then I'm begging you to not be passive on this subject, to call out this transgender selfishness. Transgender, it's not even a thing. We live in a culture that is selfish. There is male and female, period. You are either born a girl or a boy, accept it. That's just the way it is. This is not controversial. This is common sense. Let males and females, they need to be in their own damn locker rooms. There are close-handed issues that we must agree on. And there are 
open-handed issues that we can debate and work through. This question that we are asking right now, this is not an open-handed issue. This. The next speaker I have is Jeff Way. The next speaker, Jeff. My name is Jeff. For the past three years, it's become blatantly obvious that the reason we're in the world, the worldwide hurt we're in, is because nobody's been stepping up and speaking out. Everybody's been on the couch watching bread and circus, Roman Coliseum football games, and predictive programming Holly weird movies, while tyranny and insanity creeps in by design. What so many haven't yet tied together is that all of what's going on is very much tied together. The population is slash has been under attack by the cabal of eugenists that have run this planet for a long time. They purposely poison us from every imaginal, imaginable angle. Fluoride in the water, glyphosate in our food, chemtrails from the sky, EMF radiation, and vaccines in the bloodstream. These eugenists want to take us from 8 billion on the planet to 500 million. And the CEO of Pfizer recently came out and said that with the rollout of this depopulating vaccine, he thinks we might just hit the mark. Great, right? Well, another angle of their attack is to specifically target our children in every way possible. Hell, we have people dropping like flies now from this shot, and yet they're still, pu they're, they're still pushing it on our kids. They indoctrinate our kids in school and confuse them whenever possible. They don't want creative, blooming youngsters. They want more obedient cogs in the wheel. We have to protect our kids like never before. I couldn't care less what consenting grown adults want to sleep with whom. People's sexuality is their sexuality. The problem is that the policy in question at the Y opens the door to more problems for our kids. I'm not talking about the person in this in incident, but let's face it. We all know, unfortunately, there are, there are a lot of creeps out there. There are a lot of them. And letting men in the locker room with little girls just opens up a whole new hunting ground. Those that are not bound. The next speaker I have is Sean Fredrickson. Sean? If you can please pay attention to the time, it's right in front of you on the computer. Good evening. Wow, here we are trying to figure out what a woman is. It's such a strange time to be alive. Um, so on social media, if you haven't seen today, there is a video kind of going viral. There is this alleged woman that is masturbating in a women's bathroom. So uh, let me clarify. Sorry. This woman has a penis, and she is stroking it in, in a woman's bathroom. And there's a woman here. If you haven't seen it, guys, just it's on Twitter. Uh, there's a woman here washing her hands. So if you can make sense of this for me, would you be okay with this? Would you be okay with a man dressed as a woman masturbating in the mirror at a ba in a bathroom, in a women's bathroom, and call that man a woman? Because this is where we are right now. We, as people, are starting to recognize you are falling for a ploy within political correctness and we are urging you to stand for truth. Because if you don't, my children, our children, are subject to your failure. I have an eight-year-old. If this woman was my eight-year-old, if by chance my eight-year-old went into this restroom while I was patiently waiting outside for her, and there's a grown man stroking his penis around my daughter, what do you think I should do as a father whose duty is protecting my children? You're not doing it. Are you doing it, Sheriff? Because you are obligated to detain a man when he goes into a woman's bathroom. Are you not? You know what to do. There's, there's no question about it. You need to establish an ordinance to prevent this from happening in this city. Thank you. Next speaker I have is Dan Moyer. Dan. One moment. All right. 
Um, good, evening. good evening, everyone. My name is Dan Moyer. I just wanted to speak about the YMCA as they claim that they are fighting in the name of love and inclusiveness, inclusiveness to allow these men pretending to be women into these women's bathrooms and locker rooms. However, this is not inclusive and it's also dangerous for both men and women. It actually presents opportunities for men to commit crimes and to do wrong in sexual nature, which will therefore end up destroying themselves. They can't, you know, they can end up in jail, they can tarnish their soul, or they can end up in hell if they don't repent of that. It also makes women feel unsafe and not wanting to use these facilities. They're going to, or, or worse, traumatized for life. It excludes them. So therefore, it's given these actions, it's not safe nor inclusive for either of them, for men nor women, for this um, to go on. So please terminate the, um, please uh, terminate the lease with the YMCA. Thank you. Next speaker I have is Stan Baker. Hi, Council. Thank you for this uh, this time. Um, there's something that I think we're, we fail to address. We see with the YMCA and the transgender in the women's bathroom, a lot of the obvious potential risks of uh, some sort of sexual predator situation happening. Uh, one thing that I would like to point out is I'm really concerned with young children being exposed to inappropriate sexual content at an early age. Uh, there's something that I don't want my kids to see is a man's penis if they're a daughter in a public area, that's something that is, even if nothing actually happens, that's kind of traumatic. That's not a situation I think any parents would want to put their children in. So I'd like to uh, point out that we have to consider, you know, more beyond this, the physical safety issues, that there's sort of some mental and emotional issues that are at play as well. And I think that's something that I, I haven't really heard too much uh, talked about, although I've, we've heard some excellent testimony from people up here today so far. So I'd like to thank you guys for your time. I'd like to thank you that you put into consideration every possible measure that you have to sort of combat this, this issue that we're, we're facing right now. It's not something that's going away. I thank you for your courage that you're going to take to take a right stand to point to where people have to stand on one side or another. And there's, uh, I think, a clear side that you should stand on uh, as proud Americans. Thank you. Next speaker I have is Ronald Stur Zinsky? Nice try. Can, can you say your name so we have a correct? My name is Ron Starzinski. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Honorable Mayor, uh, Council, uh, I, I see many names. I voted for many of you, so it's good to see that you're here. Um, <laughs> seriously, I, I'm here to um, amplify and repeat, um, hopefully underscore some of the points that were already made about about this y YMCA um, exposure um, issue. Um, there, there's a, we m many of us agree on on this on the same points. There's an absolute need here for respect, respect for privacy. Whether whether we um, concede that that we can have a some kind of categorical solution that's going to eliminate one one side or or the evil of one side or the evil of one practice that will never happen so what i wanted what, what i want the council to consider is is a a proposal um for conditions for any kind of ymca lease renewal and and that is um a way to to plan logically um, the the configuration of YMCA's. I, I'm also a member of the YMCA a long time, and I I, atten I attend the YMCA at a number of locations. There are ways to to configure the the facilities to 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 guarantee or at least assure mostly the the privacy of of members. The the sight lines, the access, the mod modulating sight lines. 
And then um, secondly and importantly, the condition should should be have some kind of um, in, enforcement um, aspect where where um, there's a, a way to monitor and manage manage this important. Next speaker I have is Dan Bickford. Okay, start my timer. There start we go. Start speaking. Uh, so, uh, so I've got two minutes to piss the entire room off uh, because, no, I think it's short-sighted to uh, not to renew the lease for the YMCA because they do, uh, they do have a, a, they are a valuable resource for the very people that we're trying to protect here tonight. And so uh, without the YMCA, I can tell you now, and, and I'm sure that Nick over here can, can uh, also tell you, we don't have the money to budget in the budget that to keep uh, the uh, YMCA building open. We'll lose that resource. So what we have here, though, is a privacy and security issue. And that's what we need to focus on. How are we going to get past this? How are we going to protect our women and children, as well as protect their privacy, protect their, their, their security, and, and still maintain this crazy law, the, the crazy laws that the Sacramento throws at us. So that's, that's a real challenge, and, and, and I thank you all for your, for your time and your attention and for listening to everybody here, but uh, I think that if, if anything... Uh, Maybe only do the, you renew the, the, the uh, lease for a year to see what happens with the Y. I think that they will go ahead and, and make the changes necessary. Uh, but that's, that's for Marlene and her staff to make those negotiations. So thank you for your time. Next speaker, Amy Strelick. Hi, my name is Amy. I've never done anything like this before. I'm an at-home mom. Um, I'm a resident, 51 years. I'm a daughter and a sister and a wife and a mother and a grandmother of three precious innocent grandchildren. And that's my why. Stacy, go ahead and take a deep breath. We want to hear what you have to say. I felt safe growing up in East County. I rode my pony. I rode the bus to Parkway Plaza, which I wouldn't send my children to now. I played kick the can in the street until 9 o'clock at night in the summer. I drove here today. It was dark. I did not see one child out in the street playing and feeling safe. These are things I just don't see children doing anymore. But as things around here have gotten bigger, I'm sorry, and scarier, the YMCA has already, as this gentleman said, it's, it's a huge organization that has been here for a community and for children and women and families to feel safe. And for the first time in my lifetime, they're not safe. We allowed a grown man with a penis in a, lo in a, child, in a locker room with a naked child. How unsafe is that? And as community Leaders, I'm coming to you to say, if they don't change their policy as they seem to stand behind it, then you're at a crossroads that you can't renew their lease. Because as a society and as a member of society, if we don't protect our children and our women and our elderly, are we a society at all? Like, it shouldn't matter if you are transgender, if you're gay, if you're not that, I'm standing here as a Christian and I don't care. But I care that every child, even if they have a child felt like a kid. Next cat. speaker I have is Samuel DeRuth. Good evening, you guys. Thank you. 
uh, mayor and council members. Uh, my name is Pastor Samuel. I'm one of the pastors at Awaken Church and have campuses around the community, six locations. And just on behalf of our pastors, uh, Pastor Aaron and Leanne, they love you guys, honored. I actually texted them. I said I had to change my speech because I'm not used to addressing a council that it, I can tell is already on our team, is already fighting for the people, is already on the side of truth. And uh, I just, maybe what I could just encourage, uh, along with everyone else echoing that we stand for truth and to protect our women and children, to not even in consider extending that type of lease to an organization that has rejected common sense, rejected truth, and embracing things that are potentially massively harmful to women and children. I come as a pastor, but also as a father. I have two beautiful young girls, and I cannot imagine the insanity of allowing an adult male who, whatever you want to identify as, I don't care if you identify as a purple dinosaur, if you're a male you're not coming into the female's bathroom, no matter what the scenario is. This is insanity. This is really, um, this is an emperor's new clothes kind of moment, right? Where everyone has been coerced into saying, you know what, this man is a female. And everyone's just going, well, I guess out of pressure, we got to agree with that. And it, it's, it's time for us. And I can see you guys have truth on, on your side. And I thank you for that. I just want to continue to encourage you. Step up and courage. Do what's right. Challenge the narrative. Be honest about it. If the emperor doesn't have clothes, say he doesn't have clothes, right? And let's stand up for truth. And let's continue to maintain a city that people want to live in for decades to come. Thank you. Next speaker is Lou Uridel. Lou. Lou. My name is Lou Uridel. This whole YMCA thing isn't just a war on women and womanhood. It's a war on men. And frankly, all people who live in a truthful reality. Christian love has no fellowship with evil, and a man showering in the women's locker room is evil. Christian love also says to expose what is evil and contend for what is good, and that's what we're doing. Do you want to be on the right side of history or the wrong side? It comes down to that. You may ask why I'm bringing up Christian love. Well, that C in YMCA stands for Christian. Frankly, with how the YMCA is acting, they need to take the C out of their name. But then it would be the Young Men's Association. That would be even more confusing for the woke because they seem to have a particularly difficult time defining what a man and a woman is. This is a full-out assault on women. Men are trying to change what women are. Think about it. The first female rear admiral in the Navy was Richard Levine, a man. Bruce Jenner won Woman of the Year. That's a dude. Things that women have fought so hard for are now just being given over to men, including their locker rooms. I will not let this be the legacy for my daughter. And in case you didn't hear, the YMCA in Ohio, a trans woman was finally and recently arrested for indecent exposure of his penis to minor girls in the locker room. This violated a penal code. No pun intended. <laughs> Even though the YMCA told the parents that the man they saw was indeed a woman and they had nothing to worry about. I mean, if Ray Charles was still alive, he could have seen this coming. Why can't Santee? So yes, since the Santee YMCA won't act accordingly with the protection of minors and females, I am imploring the Santee City Council to stand in the gap and make the only decision that you should do and not renew the one-year lease in the YMCA. Protect our children and do the right thing. The next speaker I have is Rich Trakinski. Thank you, guys. Thank you for your service. Thanks for letting us to come up here and talk. Um, I just wanted to talk about truth. A lot of people have talked about that. We hear his truth, her truth, their truth. There's all kinds of truths out there, right? But we know that if I, everybody in here, would not want me to walk up here naked. Would you guys want me to walk up here naked? Okay. Have I made my point? I mean, come on. He... Lou's got her eye on it. It's just insanity, right? So, look, I'm not here to judge anybody because all of us are doomed without Jesus Christ. So, you know, con God-given conscious, yeah, that's great, but we need salvation. And 
Jesus will transfer and transform our minds, okay, and renew our minds. So, I guys, I just wanted to, they call me the master of the obvious sometimes. The, the, here it is. How do we accept the truth? We got to be humble. Number one, ask God to give you and receive a receiving heart to receive the truth, right? Sounds like Samuel's got it right. I think you guys have that already. And then understand the proper order of a hierarchy in our, in our country. It's God, we the people, the government is under that. So you guys are under us, all of us. You guys are under it. So thank you for your service. God bless you. The next speaker is Isabella Clifford. Isabella, is there a bunch of people standing outside still? Do you know? I don't know. I haven't been out there in a while. Okay. If anybody in the back had to take a look out there, and if anybody just hanging out there because they don't think there's any seats left in here, could you let them know there are plenty of seats to come in? I hope they're hearing me out here, by the way. Okay, Isabella, thank you very much. All right. Hello. My name's Isabella, and I'm here with the Party for Socialism and Liberation to show our support for Kristen. I'm an East County resident, and I've lived in, here and gone to the YMCA almost my whole life. I've noticed a lot of people feeling the need to lie about what actually happened in that YMCA, making Kristen out to be some sort of monster, entering the changing rooms with the sole purpose of exposing herself. Although we need to look at the bigger picture of things, this problem did not start with Rebecca. This is a deep systematic issue that's ripped, just ramped up over time. Across the country, transphobic bills are set in place more and more. <sighs> Sorry, it's my first time. <laughs> um, um, with this happening, you might expect that there's been a spike of anti-trans opinions, but that's not true at all. Two-thirds of Americans are against laws that would limit transgender rights, and only 26% of Republicans support bills that would prohibit gender-affirming care. The statistics show that people in America are becoming increasingly tolerant, welcoming, and accepting of our non cis het identities. While the tyrannical government has been trying to press draconian laws that directly counteract the will of the people. If more and more people are supporting our community, then why are we seeing so many laws being drafted against us? It's not the people asking for these bills, it's anti-trans lobbying groups willing to throw money, at a, willing to throw money around to get what they want. For example, in Montana, the first anti-transgender Sports bill passed in 2021 was worked on by a group called Alliance Defending Freedom. As long as these groups are willing to pay out, our capitalist government will be willing to comply with the requests. In the end, do you think our government should be listening to the people or the money? Because under a capitalist government, the people are never the priority. The only way to fix this problem is to listen to the public, and the public is calling for inclusion. It's important that Santee works towards inclusion and acceptance by starting LGBT-centered LGBT programs or opening a Santi LGBT center. A lot of people in the LGBT community are suicidal and depressed. Next speaker I have is Mary D. Hi, uh, good evening here. So first of all, I want everybody to realize this is basically COVID 2.0, the way the government has pitted. Uh, they make the, the rules and then they make the businesses enforce it. Very familiar to us. So ICD 10 and 11, uh, it has morphed. There's a reason transsexualism was historically classified as a behavioral psychological disorder, but then was changed recently to falling under a term now few have ever heard of, paraphilia. The definition of which is a pattern of recurring sexually arousing mental imagery or behavior that involves unusual and especially socially unacceptable sexual practices. Uh, and what they don't even realize is their own definition actually is a reason why that, that they should not be allowed in the bathroom. Uh, tellingly, the disorder of transgenderism still remains in the DSM-5, the Diagnostic Statistical Manual of Mental Illness and Disorders. Both politicians and medical bureaucrats have latched onto this uh, fragile population to order to grift off of them by creating the trans-industrial complex well on its way to being a multi-million dollar industry. 
I am here to say enough. We are tired of blanket policies that give cover to predators and leave our children vulnerable. Somewhere along the way, tolerance turned to promotion that morphed into compelled acceptance. We do not consent. You have the right to believe the sky is green. What you don't have is a right to do is to force me to validate your delusion. A society can be judged by how it treats its most vulnerable, animals, elders, children, and yes, even women. Stop in, uh, enacting and enforcing an umbrella policy that gives covers to those who would capitalize to do on our, our kids' harm. Another speaker talked about Churchill versus Chamberlain. I would call it your Pontius Pilate moment. Are you going to wash your hands of this or rise up and protect our kids? Thank you. Next speaker is George. George. Yeah, hello, Council. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, yeah, I'm just here to express my uh, disappointment. No, scratch that moral outrage towards a formerly respectable and upright organization, namely the YMCA. They've uh, gone completely rogue, just like a lot of our institutions have. Um, our public schools, universities, higher education, all rogue. YMCA, boom, done. Toss it on the scrap heap. I'm done with it. I suggest that the city of Santee terminate their lease and stop partnering with such rogue organizations. They've gone bad. They don't deserve a buck lease every year or whatever, whatever the terms are. They don't deserve it. And uh, just terminate that lease and stop partnering with these organizations, the Y who... Uh, condones, you know, sexual deviancy and even sexually, sexually predatory of behavior. Uh, no, ma no biological male, male um, even deserves or has no right to be in a woman's bathroom, women and girls' locker room at all. Stop partnering with the YMCA. Terminate their lease ASAP right now. Thank you very much. Next speaker is Consuelo. Consuelo. Uh, Consuelo, I just want to um, really, I, I usually address the people Excuse at the me, meeting. You need to ex address us. But you, I'm not talking to you. Uh, it's a non-agenda. You cannot speak then. You have to address the city council. That's what we're here for tonight. Take your testimony and not to cater to the audience. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. This is a hearing. Okay. Well, I am uh, addressing the people in the audience and I'm sorry, my back is towards you, but um, yeah, this is awkward. Uh, so what I really wanted to encourage was, um, I don't wanna say what I feel about the trans and their, their thing. I just wanna encourage all of you to attend as many meetings around the county as you can, because this was actually at a, a board of supervisors meeting the UN, you can identify as whatever to go into whatever bathroom. Um, so this could have all been avoided, but it's like people only uh, react when it's already done. And a lot of, uh, I think a lot of the responsibility is, uh, it, it's, all, it's our fault. It is our fault because we think these big local organizations, these freedom fighters are gonna, they're gonna fight for us. And when they don't show up at the meetings, well, well, you know, that kind of discourages the people that follow them, too. So I encourage you to stop following and look in the mirror and, and go within and kind of, I mean, it's up to us. So if you don't like what you're seeing, like, do you know that we're going to have poop water that we're going to be drinking and bathing in? Well, I know now because my brother invited us to a water meeting. So now I'm involved with, oh, my God, look what they're doing. To our water. Look what we're drinking. How did we get here? They fluoridate us. They, they, they poison us. They, they, it's propaganda. It's indoctrination. It's all of it. But we have allowed it. We have forgotten. We've, we've given it to the church. We've given it to the politicians. We've given it to... No, it's you. I don't care what you believe in. It's your responsibility. Believe in yourself. That's all I got. Next speaker I have is Audra. Welcome back. It's good to be back. 
So I use the name Audra, and my pronouns are rock, paper, scissors. Um, but, you know, I just, for being serious, though, um, it's really sad because what's happening is the perversion of reality. And um, it's a spiritual battle, what's going on, and they're, they're attacking the kids, but they're coming after all of us. And the problem is, is we're trying to say good is bad, bad is good, up is down, red is black, you know, all of the things that allow us to believe delusions, like drinking sewer water, as Consuela was saying, is a good thing over fresh water. That's what people believe these days. Just like, you know, I mean, a girl can feel uncomfortable and she can be told that she is not unsafe. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm a victim from being a child, being a molested child, and my dad didn't think that taking me to my babysitters every day was going to make me a victim for nine years. So just because you say that you're safe, it doesn't mean that. He probably thought I was safe. Probably wouldn't have taken me there if he didn't know at the time. But we're like blurring the lines so that we can say, you know, this man can go in there and, and it's not a bad if he does, if this, anybody, I'm like really having a hard time hearing this. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, but it's sad because being a victim, how do we know that that doesn't trigger other victims? Right? So it's like if you go in there and, and I'm a victim and I'm going, oh my gosh, but you're just, we're saying that people are safe when that's not the case. And, I mean, you know, we're even blurring the lines of, like, having these people go to a doctor like a gynecologist, and the gynecologist is seeing them. I mean, it's, it's like a perversion of what's really going on. And unless we acknowledge this, then we can't see what's really going on, and we're never going to protect the children. But it's our duty to do that. They come after us, and if we don't protect them, nobody else will. So I urge you to do that. Because I... Right. The next speaker I have is Jovan Rushing. Jovan. You know, um, I don't really come here for peace. You know, I really came here with a word for you guys. And what bothers me is just sitting here and looking at you guys. You guys don't seem bothered enough about this. And I don't understand that. Minus the gentleman on the far right, he... He seems to, to, to pay attention here. Now, we have a gentleman on the left by the name of Blake who's openly gay. He's here to speak against this. So that should let you know that there's an issue here. Right? I, I want to identify as a billionaire. If I pull out my phone, my account won't say that. You, sir, John, mayor, director, as your title is, I'm sure you have, you know, you take care of yourself well, you look well kept, you have a nice suit. I'm sure your home is lovely. If I show up there at 12 at night saying I identify as an owner of your home, I'm sure you're going to look at me like I'm crazy and call the cops. The other gentleman that showed the video of the man masturbating, what? This is what happens when you take God out of the mix. You, we can't do this better than God. He, he puts things in order for a reason. I'm, I'm shaking because I have a daughter. I, there's, there's, there's nothing you could tell me if a man was doing something like that where my daughter was. Nothing. But I can't just attack people because of something like that, right? Because there's order. That's why we have officers, right? This is a no-brainer thing. Next speaker I have is Anthony Carnival. Anthony? I need, I need you be... Folks, to not talk. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council Members. I'm guessing when you ran for office, you would have never imagined having to deal with a lease to an organization that facilitates nude interaction between minor females and adult biological males. I live in El Cajon now. I grew up on Len Street, my childhood home, I think, is in that picture somewhere. Went to Cajon Park, kindergarten through fifth grade. I never imagined I'd be here speaking about this tonight. Um, 
Many seem to think the laws of this state tie your hands. As I understand it, this city's lease with the YMCA is on terms that are very favorable to the Y. I do not think this council is powerless to protect women and children from nude interaction with adult biological males on city land. I don't imagine an application for a business license in Santee would be approved if the applicant revealed plans to allow new, nude interaction between adult males and children. Um, we're now aware of an organization that is doing exactly that on city property. There are options to address this. Um, they're not easy, but it's the right thing to do. Um, you might pick a fight with the state, but the time to make a stand is now. We're not here to make, we're not here to take orders from far off bureaucrats that imperil children in our community. We need to make a stand now. Thank you. Thank you for all you do for this city. Next speaker is John Hosick. Wow. My name is John Hosick. You know, I don't often get a chance to come to these city council meetings, and I used to come to them regularly. Listen to what I'm hearing in the public. It's terrible. It's terrible. I see a bunch of sound bites. You know, I lived, I, I remember moving to this, this city. And I remember that was one of my concerns, was being worried about a crowd in this room. I serve this community. I have served families, children, seniors, you name it. I haven't asked for anything. Now I'm going to let you know something. You as a city council, oh, I feel for you so much. You are our public servants. I know each one of you. And I feel for what you're having to listen to, because I know one thing. You guys have always fought for solutions. And for those that are in the room that don't know that, they got another thing coming. Okay, you don't think they're not in the back room or, or trying to get on the phone to get this thing solved. You're, you're way over the top. And if you think the YMCA is worthless and it's just worth a dollar, well, maybe you've underestimated the value of our community and what it actually provides. Look for the solutions. Don't dramatize the problem. Make the community better without eliminating everything that you might hold dear. For, you know, have some common sense and have some courtesy for our community. This is really a shame what I have to hear sitting in that audience. Next speaker I have is June McCreevy. You can hear me. Um, <clears throat> it's my understanding that John Minto has been co collecting information regarding the transgender at, at the Y in order to see how to move forward. And I'm here to tell you what goes on in that locker room. I've been going to the YMCA for the last year. I attend the 9 o'clock water class. That means I get out about 10 o'clock. Chrissy is the transgender that is in that class with me. It started in the locker room. Chrissy very frequently walks through the locker room without clothes on, which was awkward and weird, and I just kind of kept my distance. Um, fast forward a little bit later, I have been approached by this person who, even if they put clothes on the bottom half of them, still doesn't have clothes on the top of them. And she has breasts, and she's about this big. So when he comes over to me, I'm like, I level with his chest, which is extremely awkward and uncomfortable. And I just didn't quite know how to respond to that. The, recently, I discovered that Chrissy is transgender, which means that for the last year, I have been changing and showering with an XY chromosome man. I am 
a grandma, I'm a great grandma, this is morally wrong. And as Pastor Gary opened us in prayer this evening, I am asking you to prayerfully consider to do the right thing. That was, if you'd like to speak to me later more privately, I can tell you what goes on there because I'm, I'm someone who is there. Thank you for your time. Next speaker is Michael Castillo. Michael? Good evening. Uh, my name is Michael Castillo. I'm a uh, 21-year veteran. I'm a father of three daughters that attend the YMCA or used to attend the YMCA. Uh, even more importantly, I'm a man of God. Um, a lot of people have made a lot of good points tonight, so I don't want to keep beating a dead horse. But I had a 45-minute conversation with the GM, the general manager at the YMCA. We've been going there for years. But I asked her, I said, it's like a ticking time bomb. What is your, what is your standard operating procedure? What's your protocol if this happens again? And she's told me we have to assess each individual situation as it comes up. So it's like they're waiting for something to happen right now. It closes at 9 o'clock that they could stop immediately. So I just ask you to stand in the gap. Be bold. Take the authority of your elected position and just make the right decision. Thank you. So the next speaker I have, um, T-S-U-K-U-R-U. I don't know how to say that name. Last name F O R S? No. Naomi Noemi Abrego? I wrote this in Spanish. Sorry. Let me just do this real quick. Or do you have a... Okay. Um, my name is Noemi Arrego. Um, you get a little bit I'm, closer to the microphone. I'm sorry. Thanks. I know you're on the right side, though. I saw you stand up. You're, like, protesting against Nora. Thank you. Um <laughs> I'm a mother, um, um, let's see, oh my gosh, um, well, hold on just a second, let's restart the timer, I, I, I don't know what you're trying to look at there, I don't know if you're just nervous, but just take a deep breath, we want to hear what you have to say, okay, okay. let's start over. Um, good afternoon, um, I spend my time here a lot in East County, um, I know the problems in the area. There's a lot of predators in this area, specifically. Um, I actually used to be a teacher here at the Lakeside Union School District, and I have family here. Another thing um, is that I, the same thing, sentiments that other people have said. Um, I'm not anti-gay. I'm not anti-anything but anti-predator. I, I am. Um, it's just an attack on women. It's, um, I don't even know what else I was going to say. Um, <laughs> but um, just thank you. You know, I know um, that you guys are trying your best at, you know, you're, you're, you had been appointed to um, the SANDAG um, seat and, you know, the weighted vote took place, and that's also something that I'm working in Chula Vista and we're, you know, collaborating with um, people there so that we can make our voices heard um, because I do care about my community and where I'm at. So, of course, I'm here um, because I, I know that my heart's also here, and I'm here you know, standing for truth and for the children. And um, I think that's it. But if you guys can't see me, you guys are bigots because I identify as invincible. Thank you. Next speaker is John Parker.
No John Parker. So I have Johnny. Ramon, yes. How's it going, everyone? I've been uh, really grateful that you guys in this room's been a lot more cordial than the Oceanside room I was in last night. That place was the most belligerent and hostile place I've ever been in my life, and I went to a university. <laughs> and so... I'm from Monterey, California. My name's Johnny Ramon, emerging author, emerging uh, politician here in San Diego. And I went to Point Loma Nazarene. I got my bachelor's in psychology. And so we looked at a lot of these things that are coming up tonight in the DSM-4, in the DSM-5. And I'm still quite young. And so I was born into a nation in decline. So I've only ever known a nation in decline and arguably the most rapidly declining state in the union. Um, so as a man of faith, I, I, I want to liken this to the famous Trojan horse that I learned in my history classes. So what we're seeing right now are these Trojan horses that have entered America, and they've come in the name of feminism, secularism, postmodernism, socialism, and once you, I, I believe there's a dimension that goes beyond the physical, and it's that spirit that is guiding the same movement. These people want to take away, it's the same spirit that wants to take away our firearms. It's the same spirit that's in favor of abortion. It is the same spirit that is guiding the LGBT plus minus divided sign community. And it is the same spirit that has risen against Israel time and time again throughout the history of humanity. And even today, they're rising against Israel and the, and the people of God. And I just want to thank you guys for being, uh, actually listening to the people here tonight. Thank you. Next speaker I have is Kevin Prescott. No, Kevin Prescott. The next speaker is Richard Mendez. No, Richard Mendez. The last speaker I have is Amy Hirsch. Hello, council members. Thank you for your time tonight. I'm here as a duly licensed attorney in the state of California. Don't hate me for that. I have put my practice on hold because now I'm a full-time mama bear, and that is what I'm speaking to you as tonight. The reach of your decision on what to do with the YMCA is, has a vast reach, larger than just what reaches on the surface. Trans people are not predators. Predators are predators. And predators capitalize on opportunity. We have to remember that the YMCA partners with and runs the majority of the after-school programs for our public school children. We have to make clear the standards that we have for organizations that have their hand, have their finger, have their eyeball on our youngest and most vulnerable. You as council members have a duty, a higher duty, to the people in this community that are voiceless, even though they cannot vote. You have to advocate for them. Everyone here tonight is advocating for them. Children have a right to a childhood. This country and this county, this radical gender ideology coupled with the war on women and the war on childhood is ruining childhood for children. How sad is that? The bottom line is that the rights of an adult to identify to, as to whatever gender they want do not trump the right to a child having a childhood. Where does the line stop? Have you heard of what a MAP is, M-A-P-S? Minor attracted persons. Are we gonna be in this room a year from now saying the YMCA allows MAPs into that locker room? Because that is not okay. The, I will die for my babies, but I will live for them too, and I will be back at the next meeting too, and the next and the next. Do the right thing. <laughs> First, 
Okay, thank you very much uh, for sharing that with us. Um, I want to thank everybody for their patience and staying here uh, so long. Uh, thank you for allowing us to take that break to get business out of the way. And uh, I just want to let you know that we continue to work with the YMCA on making the changes that many of you have talked about. Um, I can tell you that I've sent staff there to look at what they can do to redesign their locker rooms, what kind of permits that are needed to do that, and then how we can fast track them to get it done. And uh, I, I liken it sometimes to throwing a baby out with the bathwater. If we can correct the, you know, the problem with a great solution, then let's do that and then take some kind of other action if it doesn't help. So um, one day we're going to probably bring this back before the council to talk about how we can uh, do things a little differently. But uh, we definitely can um, influence them, and it didn't really take a whole lot because they said they're more than willing to uh, make this happen. Uh, so along with their um, redesigning the locker rooms to make things private, they're also going to institute a no nudity policy in common areas. So we've definitely uh, been working on your behalf, and I forget who it was. I think it was John that came up uh, and said, you have no idea what we're doing behind the scenes, and the truth is you have no idea what we're doing behind the scenes, but we're listening to you. We've heard what you've said, and what's also important is we've listened to the other side on what they've said. We've talked to people that, um, that uh, want to make sure that they are not part of the problem. And so this is a lot bigger than just, you know, a city council. We have so many things that we have to do, um, you know, based on state mandates and county mandates. And we're, we don't have the, we're not the government that can override any of those. But we can, no, so, stop. But what we can do is we can advocate on everyone's behalf and talk to the people that are in the state uh, legislature to make the right changes. So, so, so thank you. Thank you very much. That's going to close our non-agenda public comment. Thanks. Okay. Folks, I need you to um, keep it down so we can finish our business real quick. That takes us to item number nine, which is continued. Uh, I'm sorry, that takes us to item number 12, council reports. Ron, do you have anything no. for us? No report. No report, thanks. Dustin? Oh, Mr. Mayor, I got about 30 seconds of silence here. So, kidding. Nothing, sir. <laughs> Council Member McNellis. No, sir, Mr. Mayor. Is and, this where uh, we sing you happy birthday, though, Mayor? No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do have a report. Thanks. I do have a report uh, regarding Sandag. And uh, there was a selection made of uh, committees this past week. They were uh, actually uh, made by the chair because the four mayors uh, could not reach a decision. And um, although I will say that uh, uh, Vice Mayor Koval and I made out, uh, we <laughs> You know, it's all about the words you choose, I guess, sometimes. <laughs> we, uh, we fared well. How's that? Better? So, uh, because uh, we both got primary seats, um, I'm on the public safety seat, and Laura is on the border seat. And uh, so, 
the count, it's interesting though, the uh, executive committee is meeting this uh, Friday. However, the rest of the board of directors meeting has been canceled. We don't know why, but uh, probably like many of the other committee meetings that continuously get canceled. However, there's supposed to be a retreat in March. I plan on being there, plan on uh, making sure that we're uh, getting our due, except my guess is it's probably going to get canceled <laughs> um, based on history. So with that, I'm just going to say that's all I have to say. Oh, I, I did uh, spend some time up in uh, Hollywood area at the New Mayors and Council Members Academy, another about 350 new California legislators, our city council legislators, very interesting. Um, and uh, we did have quite a few people from San Diego County there this time. So that was really good to be able to break bread for them with them and our counterparts over in Imperial County. So really nice, really nice. And uh, people learned quite a bit. Dysfunction Junction went off the rails again and uh, whatnot, although I wasn't part of it. So city manager, anything for us? No report, sir. City attorney. No report, mayor. All right, then. That takes us to no closed session. This meeting is adjourned. You got kicked out by that.